Hello everyone, this is Fallen Dice, and welcome to episode 4 of Burpcraft Feed the Beast with Fallen Dice. So, where to go from here? Um, it's a, I, this, this mess that is trying, I love up there, but I need a better storage. <laughs> And I'm, I want the auto crafting and everything. This room was always meant to be my applied energistics room, which is what it's still going to be. Um, and then, as once I finally have that, I can start building all the extra machines and all the things that I need. Because right now, building it by hand, it's all small scale. Once we get the auto crafting in, then we can start pumping things into the system, and then moving on over into here and setting up our auto smelting, auto ore processing, all the things that we want to do need that. Um, got a big giant uh, ender quarry going right now, so it's feeding all into here. Starting to get some stuffs in here. Um, not a lot of stuffs yet. Um, and I also found out that apparently I do have the proper this is a big one I do have the proper iridium that I need to make that giant complicated process to start mass producing iridium so I am gonna have to look into that as well definitely not today today for like I said today is all about the uh, applied energistics I just want to stick this whoops I just want to stick this in my uh, smeltery so I can actually get some more Madeline, it's always a good thing to have. Stick you there for a moment. <laughs> right, so basically, I've already gone ahead and done a bit of the pre work for this episode. Uh, as you can see, when we're in this chest over here, there's a lot of the applied energistic stuff in here um, ready to go. Um, I also, one of these two bags, there we go. I've got some of the basic machines built already, and I've got five 16K storage drives. And all this is basically what I need right now um, to get started. And then once I get this all built and stuff, then it'll be a lot easier for me to uh, move on and start doing some of my, uh, my other projects. So, um... Let's head over here, because a big part of this equation is going to be how much space is going to be taken up by uh, our crafting unit. Let me go get something I can lay on the ground here. A nice stack of dirt will do. Because a big thing is that there needs to be enough space between them. I don't want everything like whoops right on top of it. All right, let's come back over here. Um, and I talked about uh, doing a face cam starting with some of my episodes. I got to look a little more into that. I know I want to be able to um, do like streaming and then in the middle of the stream, you know, start recording a bit for the uh, the YouTube and then go back to streaming again. I have to find verify that I can. Um, record through OBS while I'm streaming through OBS because uh, when I recorded through Fraps it definitely didn't pick up the camera I might have to do, I mean there might be a way to make that work but right now I'm not sure so I'm kind of just kind of stand by at that for the moment All right. so if I did it this way two, three, four, five by five would give me Three high, three wide, so it's 27 spots. Um, although I can actually I can go lower, can't I? It doesn't have to be the same. It doesn't have to be a perfect square, I believe. Actually, let me check that real fast. Hold on. Hey, yes, I can go higher than I can go wide. It doesn't have to be a perfect square. I was pretty sure about that, but I just wanted to make sure. So what the plan will be is the crafting CPU is going to be a 5x5 in the width 
and it's going to be level with the floor, so it's not going to stick up inside this room, so you'll be able to walk freely through this room normally, but you'll be able to see it, just walk over the top of it, and then it's just going to keep going down below underneath us. Um, and then I think a lot of our machines may be above along the sides of the wall just to give it some, I mean I don't want just a room with like a bunch of stuff on the floor, that's not very cool. So we'll line machines and different things across across the room and areas, make it kind of look like a, a working type room. And then, I think that should look pretty cool. And then we're also fairly close to our energy storage over here, although I am having a bit of a problem right now with uh, MJ. I'm not sure why. Now, this is RF2, so it's what I've been using to come over here, and I'm curious. I've got these things turned on like this to, you know, keep the the furnace always at 100%. Let's see if turning that off has any change on this. Nope, I'm still losing it the exact same... I was before. So somehow I've got some kind of negative draw going on in my system. We need to see we're losing power, so that wasn't that wasn't it. None of these machines are turned on. I mean they all have power. I'm not sure if some of these shouldn't be using power that I'm aware of. The thing is, is I got these turned on right now, but right now, and these are full of lava, so these should be, oh wait, that's why, ha, <laughs> I remember now, um, I wanted to be able to keep my system on, this thing when it filled up, and it had no place to send the, uh, the RF, it lagged me crazy. So I actually had disconnected that cable. So let's see. Just need one of you. Oh, I just need the wrench, don't I? <laughs> Now let's verify. Oh yeah, and we're jumping up. Okay, good. So that's all that was. All right, crisis averted. <laughs> but uh, all right. So yeah, let me uh, do some digging in here. Let me get my basic setup here going. Because once we get this installed on this floor here, we have a lot of thinking to do on how we want to plan out our other spaces. Because I really want to get all my machines interconnected. So. Let me at least get the basic uh, ME system installed here in this room. And then once we get to that point, I'll come back and we'll kind of go over where our, where we're going to go next. So, see you guys in a few. All right, step one is complete. You see I've already replaced that. Um, and this is just the very generics of a setup, with the exception of this. Um, and I did only go, end up going 5x5x5, five by five by five, because I really don't have a need for going past nine pages of recipes at the moment but the cool part is is when I get to that point all I got to do is go down below and take out the vents and the the containment walls drop it down a couple more blocks and it's easy easy to upgrade so right now I've got uh, one row of pattern providers and two rows of the crafting CPUs to speed up the actual processing crafting speed of that. I've got my five 16k uh, drives here. Once this is all hooked up I can actually start doing the bigger ones. Here's our basic terminal controller showing what we're using right now. And then over here partition and editor so I can actually if I want to make say make a single drive for one type of item. When I get to the 64k's that's when I'll do that. Because, you know, you, you still can only put 64 items in, so if you end up putting 64 itty-bitty items, you're wasting a ton of space. So things like cobble or stuff like that, you know, we want to partition that and make it so it just goes into one drive. But, 
Uh, if I come over here, cracking terminal is up. So I can basically, let's go ahead and get all this stuff that I've been building with in there. Move along here. Yeah, we'll toss you in there for now just because you're here. This whole chest is going to be going in there. Uh, it's going to make crafting so much easier. <laughs> Once I get all this stuff in there. And so the first first part of using this is just going to be um, using the ability to just come over here and say I want to wanted to make one of those. I uh, don't have all of what I need. What do I have that I could make one of? There we go. So I can just shift right click now. All the items are there. Click as many times. It's good to go. So this, for now, makes this part of crafting easier. But I want to start using that. Um, and, that'll, and that works fine for stuff that I already have materials for. But in addition to that, I also need to start being able to intertwine all of these into there. So that's where we are now. I'm not going to worry about extra power quite yet. Uh, we're just going to have to survive on what we got. Lava's decent enough for now. We will end up upgrading here in a little while. Um, but first, I'm going to go through all these chests of things that I've been kind of uh, using to hold all my crafting stuff. Put them inside here. I'm going to go up top and take a bunch of the items that I need to do a lot of the crafting stuff as well. Put them down into here. It's going to be a little bit before I can actually connect um, those barrels into the system, but at some point I will end up con you know, connecting to quite a few of them. That way it'll save on drives down here, plus I can still have my look up there, so it'll give me the best of all the worlds. So I'm going to clean things up a little bit, get all my stuff into here for crafting, and then we will come back and tackle the next part of this, which is going to be setting up either the machines for auto um, processing which is probably not a bad idea because I need to do all this stuff or at the very least set up some patterns we'll figure that out but anyways I will be back in a little bit okay so added in the pattern encoder now and I've put in quite a bit of stuff into here now I emptied out all our chests <clears throat> um, and then in over here, filled it up. I added some more. I added some 1K drives just for like your little, it, your small stuff. It doesn't really take up, you know, it's not a lot of them, but it needs some space. So, you know, this will help me do something. So I'm not wasting the big drives. Uh, as I get a little more stuff processed, we're going to come over here to this one and we'll start putting in our 64K drives. Um, and also I need to go in this partition editor and start, you know, putting in on the 64s, when I get the big ones, I'll come over here and just tell it which ones I want to do. Then I believe I can use the I.O. And and it'll basically put the items that need to be inside there. I'll have to look a little more into that, but... Um, better usage of my drives. And I'll end up putting more drives, you know, around this room eventually as we get there. Um, <clears throat> but now it's time to actually start building. But before we can build, we need the recipes. A couple more in there. So it's going to take me a little while, but I'm going to go through and start putting in all the recipes. So the basic stuff, I'm going to go with uh, <clears throat> like IC2. Oops, I guess uh, at IC industrial. That should do it. But I need to start going through all the different machines I've got to build, figure out which components I need for those machines and then start setting up the recipes for all this. That's that's where I'm at right now. I don't know why you're so slow updating. Any eye has been weird for me today. Obviously, this stuff shouldn't all be here. Just it, I'll put in the stuff here, and it seems to take a while before it actually updates any eye. But uh, anyway, so yeah, there we go. It's all in my industrial craft stuff. So I'm going to go through and start putting in the basic things like, you know, your... Uh, uh, actually, when we get down here, the 
circuit cards and the advanced circuit cards, casings, all those things. So we're going to make recipes for all that to try and make this um, process of building all these things easier. And pretty much from here on out, if I have to craft anything, <clears throat> I am going to basically make a pattern for it. Anything I craft is going to make a, it will have a pattern made to make that that item. That way, I never have to make it again. So slowly over time, this bad boy over there is going to start filling up. When I get to the point where I don't have enough space, that's when we'll drop it down another level and we'll throw in another 16 pages. So anyway, um, let me make some uh, get some patterns put in there. Uh, maybe even get some some machines constructed. And when we come back, we will start actually uh, setting up our first. Uh, maybe we'll make our. Uh, our our first processing room. I think what I really want to do at first is is ore processing. I want to keep having ores coming in, whether it's uh, nether ores or standard quarry ores, whichever one. I want them to come straight through, get macerated, get um, cooked, and then basically placed in our system. So, anyway, let me get to work, and I will be back in a few. All right. So this took a little while, um, but we're definitely progressing. So I've also added in here our crafting monitor, so in the event that's something I'm trying to uh, craft over here, you know, if it uh, don't have whatever it is I need for it, you know, I can find out what I'm missing and try and fix it. So, here's what we got so far. I was using chests to kind of sort out. Went a little overboard. Um, but basically here, uh, I've got it set up, trying to set it up by genre-ish. And again, as I more stuff I realize that I need, I'll start throwing them in. But a lot of the stuff you have here is just for the machines that you see in the next few pages. So here's our vanilla stuff that we need to be able to make. This is all of our thermal expansion stuff. And not all of it, because again, anything that has to go into uh, the interface, such as things like uh, smelting, grinding, all that kind of stuff, I haven't made any of those co uh, patterns yet because they can't go in here, they've actually got to go next to the machine. Um, next one is all my uh, Ender IO stuff, so we can create more of these. And again, a lot of the stuff we're going to have to, as we create the items, we'll, we'll, we'll add the extra um, uh, form, not formulas, uh, ingredients, uh, mats, all that, all that stuff. <laughs> um, over here, have all of our applied energistic stuff. And then Industrial Craft 2 is over here. Um, I haven't gotten along to build craft yet, but this is this is a good enough to be able to move on to where I want to go next. And lots of zeros, which is a good thing. So we're still doing good on storage right now. But yes, so now it's time to start setting up our uh, our processing. And I've got to decide what I want to do in this room here in general, because right now I've got a lot of stuff here. And I don't want to just leave this, like this was my first time, kind of like a museum sort of thing. I definitely want to use this room. So I've got to, uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of uh, work here as I tear some of this stuff out. Um, probably move things away from the walls by at least one block so I can fit the, uh, the ME interface in behind each one of these. And yeah, I have to come up with some kind of theme or something. Like, uh, I don't think I'm gonna put all of my ore processing in here because it's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. So I might pick like a different different uh, one of these rooms and, and just basically put all my macerators, grinders, things like that um, for pulverizing and making my dusts and things. And then of course it'll all come back over to here, send it somewhere else to cook it. And I'll probably design my rooms that way. It'll be themed rooms. So obviously the first thing I need to do is I need my macerators, grinders, stuff like that. So um, let me order up some machines, kind of just plan this thing out, and, uh, and I will be back in a moment. All right, so uh, I've been busy. Um, I haven't actually built the things just the planning like normally I'm not a big planner you know would we'll, we'll just I just kind of wing it fit this in here fit this in there um, but this one was a little bit more you know because I'm, I'm, I'm setting up multiple systems with different types of items and things 
So I really kind of wanted to do a little more planning. Um, this room here, I couldn't do the, the full planning yet because I've got all these machines around. I don't want to take these out until I move them to their new area. So I kind of just put in what's going to go in here. So, you know, the painting machine will stay in. Uh, I want to put in the igneous extruder, um, even if just for recycling, because I'm going to be needing to do a lot of recycling, so might even do a few of them. I might actually put those down there as well, depending, because right now I seem to be getting a lot of nether rack, which I can also use. Either way works. Um, IO port. Um, all the uh, AE stuff is kind of going to go in here or in there. Um, so, I don't know, maybe take out this window and make this just a larger room. That's not a bad... And maybe even do it over there. Maybe I could make these first rooms just large rooms. I hadn't even thought about that. Huh. Maybe. Well, we'll see. <laughs> um, so same thing with the crafting monitor, the storage monitors, the crafting terminals. And then I do want to put in an MFSU in this, in this room. Um, and I will probably feed from there into some step-down transformers to actually power this room as well. But I want it up here where I can see it, so... Oh, I hadn't even noticed he was here. Hi and bye. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that I can just walk up to it, click on it, throw in my jetpack, or whatever I need to do, and uh, get it all charged up nice and quick. So, since I pop in here... You know, when I when I drop down, it's close by where I need to be, and I might. No, yeah, we'll, we'll leave that where that is. All right. So anyway, so that's this room here. Um, and this room, and this this will be all the way through I, because the stuff's in the way here again. Until I actually get things moved into its newer place, I kind of leaving it here as I planned it. Um, so basically. Actually, we should probably start over here. <laughs> all right. Wall of Macerators. So all my uh, ores coming in, each one of those is going to have a specific macerator it goes to. Some may have a couple, but I don't think there's going to be a lot of things dropping down into them. So if it backs up, it backs up. Um, I'm probably going to use... Uh, um, oh, what, the, what am I looking for? I was looking at reactors a second ago. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Import bus. I'm sorry, export bus. I'll probably use an export bus to feed into these, and the export bus will will put the different types of ores. So all the stuff coming in will just go into my AE network, and then if there's room in here for something that's in the network, it'll pull it in. So you know, if I've got two items that are both here, eventually it'll finish macerating the one, and then it'll start pulling the other one. So that should work. Um, the uh, the dirt back here is going to be my um, interfaces, so that's kind of the same all the way through all these these different areas. Um, that's how I'm going to be doing that. Um, so I just will start putting in different types of machines that I may or may not at some point need. So one glacial precipitator, um, two pulverizers, uh, one sawmill, and two sag mills. Um, over here, uh, this is going to be. Um, two blocks each, so each one is going to be a Magma Crucible and a Liquid Transposer. Ran out of room to write it, but... So we got Lava over here, Glowstone, uh, Liquid Ender, and Redstone. So it'll basically... We'll melt it down here, send it over to the Transposer here, and then over there, there's a hole in my wall now. We are actually going to be having to build a new... Uh, ooh, I must be out of... I am a new room over here and you see the stairs going down they needed to be taller <laughs> so we're gonna be putting in I guess some iron tanks I think in here to store all of our fluids that way we can use them pump them from from there so we'll send it from here over to there and I'll probably end up using well, we'll see we'll cut we'll, we'll figure that part as we go uh, over here we'll be using some extractors and over there some compressors so then on the way over here, you see now we've got the ore washing plant and thermal centrifuges. Not everything that I macerate will get washed and centrifuged. Um, probably more like things that I actually want, but we'll see. If I get to the point where I'm all caught up on everything, I may send everything. Who knows? 
Um, the thing is, I'm only going to have like four ore watch, and I don't really need an entire wall of them. But we'll see. Um, bottling, canning, electrolyzer, rolling machine, couple metal formers. I want a couple metal formers just because it's going to be a lot of recipes, especially with the automatic crafting over there. So I figured it wasn't a bad idea to have a couple of those. Um, all my cooking. So we have induction furnaces back there, a lot of induction furnaces because that's how we'll be making most of our ingots and stuff. So once it gets through either just the macerator or the macerator followed by the ore washing thermal centrifuge, it'll end up over here and it'll get cooked. Um, some things need the induction smelter, some things need the alloy smelter to get certain alloys and ingots and things like that. So those are in here as well. And then I put a couple of redstone furnaces on the edge just to kind of balance the room out. Uh, last room that I worked out is this one. Um, so over here, I am going to have a lot of recyclers. Um, and it's going to be feeding two different sides here. So um, mass fabricators. UU matter is definitely a bit different with the uh, experimental version of uh, IC2. So it's all liquid UU. So basically the recyclers are going to be feeding in to these mass fabricators to create our UU. Uh, MFSU over here powering all this um, so was, we're gonna end up needing a lot more power so power is gonna be adjusting but we shouldn't have to change these rooms as power changes because we'll still have this will be the same same thing on this side MFSU mass fabricator with those recyclers feeding into here anything excess you know that doesn't need to go into here um, will just be sent into storage if we really start getting a lot we might just start to um, have it auto open those things and get the items out um, scanner right here for the replicator I just needed one just to get the initial scans um, and then over here I'm gonna have uh, two replicators just in case I'm trying to create two things at once I may only do one at a time but it's not bad to have a bad idea to have two and then of course I'm not sure what's here but we obviously have not decided or not figured out every single item that I need to make here so this gives us room to expand um, and then of course same thing over here more room to expand and then we'll have to create this room here so um, now that I've kind of got this planned out kind of show you what my uh, thought process is um, I'm gonna end up doing all this off camera possibly on stream we'll see um, and then once I've got all this stuff taken care of um, or built and kind of put in place then we'll come back and kind of take a peek at it and see and see how everything looks um, hopefully at this point then um, my quarrying should be pretty much automated so when I send stuff in it'll automatically um, be processed and do all the things that it needs to do I don't have to even think about it other than maybe moving quarries um, and I should be even almost close to being able to hmm, not sure why that's there should be close to being able to even start working on my second uh, dome uh, but I think I think for my next episode, after this is all done, and we can concentrate on it, I would like to do what I didn't do on my last one, and that is to actually finish my house. <laughs> so that may be our next episode. I'm not sure. Um, I might actually probably try and uh, work on an en the Ender Ender as well as a side project too. But I've done that before, so I don't know that, that really needs to be an episode. Uh, but we'll see. So anyways, I'm going to go through and get to work and start installing all of this machinery and all this equipment. And once I'm finished, I'll be back and we'll, we'll take a look at it. Alright, so I think uh, I've gotten about as much done here as we are going to for this episode. Uh, so we'll kind of walk through here real quick. Uh, move that window f or the door from there over to the center which gives us a straight shot all the way through. I just it was kind of weird to have to kind of come over to this side. But over here, uh, you can see this is our crafting room. Uh, these eventually will just be able to start coming up with the things that I really want to keep my eye on the most. And we'll just pop them in here. This will give me a nice idea of, you know, high, high necessary, high need items in the inventory. Got this thing in here, just plugging away cobblestone for now. Um, in here, or washing, 
Uh, I've already run through all my ore, so I don't have the ability to go through and put the stuff in here yet, but we will eventually. Uh, I need more stuff to be able to make my centrifuges. I've not... I'm going to have to do some, a bit more quarrying and stuff to get there. Uh, so here we got the metal formers. I got one of you. One of them is doing rolling. One of them is extruding. Throw the recipes for the different types of items I need in there. Rolling machine, nothing in there right now. As I need it, I'll do something with it. Like I said, these are just some of the other machines we needed. And then, of course, over here. This is where um, I had the crushed ore going in here, but uh, once I get more crushed ore, next time I want to put them over here and wash it before we put it through the induction furnace. So right now it's kind of, I should probably take all these out of there too, just so that I make sure if I'm trying to make something with dust, I was just trying to get rid of I had ma massive amounts of backup dust. <laughs> uh, this, I think, turned out really cool. Trying to find a way to pump this. I, I considered putting it into like a iron tank or something. But I think right now I've got enough to, to be able to give me what I want. And it gives me a really cool, I think, visual. So we got the uh, crucible sending stuff up there. Um, in the back here, just telling it to export. This will be glowstone once I get more. Um, and then over here is where I can put the different recipes for what we actually need in here. And then I've got the outputs coming from here and then over there. I just ran out of sides, so I had to kind of be creative. I uh, threw uh, the cyclic assembler over there. Right now it's taking all of the uh, scrap I get and turning them into uh, the uh, um, scrap boxes, sorry. <laughs> uh, and then extractors when I need them, compressors. I've already gotten a few, a few recipes in there. Again, as I get more stuff, we'll... I'll add more things to it and then of course back here these are all the different types of uh, things that we get in that we're going to need to macerate so far and then over here I got things like uh, the diamond dust so stuff that I wouldn't want to just macerate everything I get it'll only do it on demand goes over there nothing in this room and over here I'm getting started so I've got my recyclers going now um, and the way it's set up right now is it's importing netherrack, and as long as there's no act or no redstone signal, it'll keep importing netherrack. Back here, I've got these level emitters, which are saying to keep 10,000 netherrack in the system. If it goes below 10,000, it'll light this up and it'll stop inputting into it. Um, so I don't really care so much about the netherrack right now. I'm trying to get it out of my system, so that's why I'm doing it because I have the uh, the nether quarry going. <coughs> but Eventually, I'll have different things being used in these, you know, cobble and whatnot. So I just want to make sure that whatever I'm using, I don't use it all up and just scrap everything. I keep at least what I want. And then once we get the fabricators and things, for now, I just put some drums in here. Um, eventually, I'd like to put, like, an iron tank to kind of get a visual of all the UU building up. Um, and then over here, we'll use it by the replicators. So there we are so far. Um, actually, the two things to show... Um, well, we already showed all the recipes, so that's not a big issue. Uh, I may need to restart here. I mean, getting this like a pretty big delay when I'm opening certain um, certain items. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Um, and then while it's open, it might even be NEI. I think it, I think I had that problem once before when I was with NEI. It was kind of I just needed to restart the program. So, anyways, I'll leave that right there. Uh, but that those are all the recipes. But uh, what I did is <laughs> underneath was getting kind of out of hand. You know, most of the stuff I was using my jetpack to try to connect cables and things like that. So I added another floor down here to do, to be able to walk in, and I've cleaned things up quite a bit. Um, so for the uh, conduit for the or for the ME stuff, uh, the Ender IO has this ME conduit, which basically connects to and does exactly like your normal. Um, ME cable, but I can tie it up into here with the energy so I can actually run multiple things in one block. So it also gives me the ability to, um, if I get the, there you go, you can see how it's, this is the uh, conduit, uh, kind of like a cover up block. So it looks like a normal block. I put it through the painter, but you know, when I have the select, I can see it. So it allowed me to 
not have holes in my floor in a lot of places like I, I, I don't like. So, like I said, much cleaner down here. A lot of the stuff you can see is just down over there. I was also told that this stuff actually helps lessen leg, having them all filled up. So at some point, eventually, I'm going to basically cover all of these cables with uh, these conduit facades. Um, and I still need to make this extra room down here, but eh, we'll get to that eventually. Um, this was definitely a lot of work and a lot, a lot of resources. So I'm pretty much at the stage now where I need to recoup. So my ender quarry is just about done. Um, original reason for the ender quarry was because I wanted to get the uh, the uh, iridium, and now that I know how to make that, it's not really as big of an issue. Um, I got two. All I really needed was one, I think. We'll see. If not, I can get some more from the other guys. But I should have enough to be able to start replicating it over there eventually. So what I need to do for my future quarry is I need to go to the deep dark. So I may look into making my own deep dark portal, which means I've got to activate my um, sig sigil. I don't think it's down here. I think, I, I think my sigil's upstairs in an actual chest. It's not activated, but means we need to activate it. There it is. Yeah. I found it in a chest, so we'll need to activate that. Then we need to make some uh, uh, some unstable ingots to open up the uh, deep dark portal. Uh, and I could go to, like, shoes, but I really don't want... I, I want mine over in my area, because from what I understand, the deep dark, um, wherever the portal is, it's, it's going to be equal to where your base is. So I, I don't want to be you know, in their area, kind of mess with their stuff, so that is that, but our next episode, and I may work on that off camera, I don't know, we'll see, but I definitely do want to start working on the mansion upstairs, so, oops, wrong direction, alright, so I need to start figuring out which block types I want to use, gathering my materials for the outside, um, and then start working on that, and I think I'm almost, almost be ready for another level of this over here. So, anyway, um, yeah, that's the end of this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.